couple of weeks ago, I uh, just triggered on uh, looking at Jung and seeing the DVD, and you mentioned Jung once, so I didn't feel this question would be, would be something you'd probably be interested in, in just commenting on what um, Jung and what you're doing now, uh, commonalities or, or differences or I have, the, I, I, have, I, have enormous, I have enormous respect for Jung as a, uh, as a scientist, as a psychologist, and as a shaman of the West. And I've actually written quite a bit about him, particularly recently in my blogs. I spent three nights recently reading line by line the Red Book, I mean, his underworld journey. And I spent three entire, up all night for three nights going through the underworld journey with him. And when you do anything like that, I wouldn't suggest that you are as crazy as me and do it that way. That's too much. You understand the price he paid for his knowledge. I mean, he's a man who went to the edge of madness and belong, uh, beyond and came back. He paid an immense price for his knowledge. In his, in his own use of dreams, and of course, in his own work on synchronicity theory, he invented the word synchronicity, because he's impatient of people not knowing how to talk about coincidence. In his practice of, uh, with his dreams and with synchronicity, he was absolutely marvelous. I mean, his whole life was, was driven by these things. He says in uh, Memories, Dreams, Reflections that he has, to paraphrase, he has interesting ideas all day long, but all the serious work that he does is directly inspired by his dreams. I live that way too. So in his personal practice with dreams and synchronicity, he's great. In his practice of dream work, he is limited because he's still an authority figure who is not giving his, regarding his clients as patients, who is not yet fully giving the power to the dreamer. He's a product of his time, his culture, his education, and his authority status. You see, something has happened since Jung which we have to understand. And, and North America's made a great contribution here. I don't know to what extent Canadians have been involved in this, but certainly American South border have been big in this. The, America, the North American dream work movement, which I didn't create, I'm, I've benefited from it. Its great contribution starting in the early 1970s was to say dreams belong to the dreamers. Jung never said that. Not that clearly. Well, he does a little bit. You can find the odd quote here. There. But in his practice, he is essentially Herr Professor Dr. Jung, who is the authority on the dream and will sometimes go off on a very long mythic and alchemical excursus when you read it, I was recently reading the book called Children's Dreams. It is the transcript of his seminar from 1936 to 1940. See, I am a professor too. Uh, it's a transcript of his seminar from 1936 to 1940 on, remember, on dreams from childhood remembered by adults. And if you want the best of the mythic Jung and actually some of his clearest statements on dreams, this is his most important writing on dreams. It's only recently been published. So there's a lot more of Jung coming out that we've known about. It's very interesting, but when you read it, you think, gosh, he never really came back to the individual dreamers. He's quoting texts to comment on texts instead of working with dreamers through and giving their own, them their own power. In his practice of active imagination, he's great. And he was occasionally suggesting later in life that if you're not going to do active imagination, which can become a little bit like some of this re-entry stuff I'm talking about, then I don't want to see you. The long and short of it is this, going back to the dream work movement. Until the American dream work movement got underway, there was still a tendency to think that we need to give our dreams to someone who will tell us what they mean. We need to be patients in front of the doctor. We need to be children in front of the teacher. The American dream work movement, spearheaded by people like my friend Henry Reed and others back in the 70s, said very clearly as a clarion call, dreams belong to the dreamers. And then Monty Ullman, a clinical psychiatrist, came along in New York City. And Monty, as a clinical psychiatrist, put aside his certifications and his white coat authority, and he said, the only way we are allowed to talk to dreamers about their dreams is to say, if it were my dream, and give them our associations and projections, not as the authoritative interpretation, but as our best guess of what the dream means from our point of view, and let them to figure out, let, leave them to figure out the meaning for themselves. Jung never got anywhere near that, you see. Had he lived another 30 years, he might have, because Jung was always a my 